last Saturday evening, I was riding back on my scooter from um, UD Town, which is down in that direction, through Prime Square here, down towards the Chinese temple and towards our house and Nongvoa Park, where Pook and I jog most mornings. Suddenly, I slammed on the brake, something caught my eye, and it was this. Absolutely astounded. You'd be hard pressed to find one of these back in the UK, but to see one here in Thailand, it was like I was seeing things, just couldn't believe it. Minis have always held a special place in my heart, from seeing them play the starring role in the Italian job, to being taken out as a kid in my uncle's Mini Cooper, which he eventually ended up wrapping around a lamppost, and then on to owning a few of my own. They're just great little cars, and I know they're iconic, they're part of the swinging 60s, they're just great little vehicles, they really are. Now this one really caught my eye. I used to own garages doing vehicle renovation and uh, classic, car rep um, classic car rebuilding. Looking at this, it is just a top class renovation job. They've used one of the original colours, which surprised me as well being here in Thailand, but look at the finish as well, that finish is far superior than you would ever have got on any standard Mini. It's one of the early ones, uh, well in fact all the vans and pickups had these little pinch um, catches for the windows, and the windows slide on these. A slight alteration there, there's no way it would have had an automatic gearbox back in the day, but this one has. And you can see the, the old type, this is the early minis, the mini pickups and the vans had these little outside hinges which used to always like rust the pins and the doors used to drop on them, you had to replace the pins. I decided that I was going to look for the owner, see if I could have a look under the bonnet and a quick look round inside. He was in one of the barber shops here having his hair cut. He said, if you don't mind waiting for me, he was actually in the chair having his hair done. If you don't mind waiting for me, he said, happily show you around and tell you a bit about it. So uh, I stood around outside and waited. Ironically, while I was waiting for the owner, uh, one of the newer model minis came past. I still despise these things. I really don't like them. For me, they look like a, an overinflated version of the original mini that's been on steroids for years. Eventually the owner came out and proudly started showing me around the vehicle, lifting the bonnet and opening the doors. Almost everything here under the bonnet is exactly as it would have been as it rolled out of the factory. A couple of small changes that they've made, and they've made it suitable for Thailand as well. Uh, that alternator, that wouldn't have been there, that would have been a dynamo um, instead of that. That big thick pipe leads down to a compressor, which is for the air conditioning. It's got a little air conditioning unit fitted, and that fan on the left is for the um, condenser on the air conditioning unit slightly different air filter on there but like I say pretty much the same as what it would have been right from uh, right from when it was made so looking inside you can see the little air conditioning unit there that's been added the automatic gear shift that wouldn't be wouldn't be original they didn't make these as automatic so they're all manual Seats have been refurbished, very similar to the original type, slightly different but very, very similar. Speedo on this is in uh, uh, kilometres per hour, but everything looks the same. It's a Smith's Clocks and it looks identical, done 704 uh, kilometres. There's the original little ashtray, sign of the times there. He's got Facebook mats in there as well, he said it came with them and he's kept them. These old type handles here, the little push levers there to open the door and a small catch there to lock it. Very, very primitive, but they worked. That paintwork is just absolutely stunning, the finish. And there's the back there, absolutely immaculate like the rest of the vehicle. So, how much is this little gem worth? Or how much did the guy pay for it? These little vans, they started making them in 1960, they went out of production in 1983. To buy one of these in 1960 would have cost approximately £500, so it's around about 20,000 baht. The guy who owns this bought it five years ago from a company in Bangkok who renovate these, these kind of vehicles. He actually paid 2 million baht for it, it's approximately 45, 46,000 pounds. I have to say, I wish it was mine. 
So, fortunate enough today to be able to sit down with uh, Ian and have a chat about his business, World Football Legends. Legends so. so, tell us a bit about it. What, what is it exactly you do? Um, um, well, we've been in Asia now for close to 10 years. Okay. Um, and what we work with is the the love of football, mm. uh, the local community, yeah. and everyone knows the Premiership uh, and La Liga and the, and the Bundesliga. And there's a passion, there's a passion for fans. Not everybody travels to these countries. So what we decided to do is when the, the footballers retire and then bring them to see these amazing places. Okay. Uh, the trip to Udon is fantastic. Uh, unfortunately, it got coloured a little bit short. We were uh, due to be at a golf event today, but uh, that's 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 life. Yeah. We would like to do some things with the local community, with the underprivileged children, and give back to the community so that the players can explain a little bit about their lifestyle. Sure. So it's a win-win situation. You've got the people out where you are. You've got the the um, excitement and the needs for the corporate people and the business people in the areas to be able to sit down and speak with their heroes and raise a bit of money. Yeah. I mean, basically, a lot of the uh, the companies that sponsor the Premiership mm. obviously uh, are involved in rewarding clients in in Southeast Asia. Sure. So you know, previously we did Man United and Liverpool yeah. in Singapore and in uh, Thailand. Yeah. Good crowds, you know, 28,000 people. Mm. Tickets at the right price, what the local community would like, and making sure that you know there's a win-win situation, like you said. Okay, so here, just a, a business here in Thailand, they're looking at a corporate event and they'd like to get you involved to get some players over. How would they do it? How would they get in touch? Yes, it's simple. It's uh, it's worldfootballlegends.asia and also, you know, with the email address, the website, and just reach out to us and then we'll come and uh, put a package together where, you know, if you, if you decided that you're uh, mad Liverpool fans and mad Man United fans and you want to host a dinner and the benefits can go towards charity, yep. uh, the benefits are you host a dinner, which is great, meet and greet, signing autographs. Mm. I think last night was a great example of his people yeah. having signed shirts and everything else. And, you know, Teddy's a success all over the world. Yeah, sure. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he's a gentleman to work with. So, mm. you know, and we, and we also, when they're playing in their career in the first team, it's, it's always difficult. It's, it's flight, hotel, football pitch, leave same as a rock star same yeah. as a rock star yeah, sure. but, the, but with us you know we are we're leaving here now we're leaving udon today and we're going to be in uh, bangkok for another four days mm. uh three days work and three days golf so it's sure. not a bad it's uh, not a bad mix is it not not a bad trip for yeah, those not that, too bad uh, at all. love it yeah no it's good so last night you were working with um udon tani football club yeah udon, Tarn with him. udon tani football club they uh they promoted us to come over and to meet the local community the, nice. the food in the restaurant i think it's called up up uppers uppers yeah. just here in U uni yeah. town yeah. yeah i'll put links to everything and um and yeah the, the food was fantastic mm. the, the 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 live singing was great yeah and uh and it's obviously we're here in the hotel which is a beautiful boutique hotel. it is yes it's it's a really nice place yeah, yeah. The thing is, I mean, I, I need to thank, thank Alexander Capisodo, the captain of Udon Tiny Football Club. It was him who mentioned it to me, introduced me to you, and of course you've been kind enough to do this for me and let me have a chat with you and to have a chat with uh, Teddy, so yeah. appreciate I, that. I mean, I mean, the answer on the cake with Alex is that it's purely and simply, obviously, they have the, the conversation regarding how to make sure that they qualify to... Yep. To, to go up the league and everything yeah. else but you know the benefit is of course Alex was benefiting from uh, Teddy's knowledge and Teddy's experience and, sure. and that's what we like to do with the local footballers but he's an absolute gentleman Alex and, he really uh, is we, great we, guy. we hope to God that they uh, they make the playoffs sure and that's the that's the important thing well thanks so much Ian really appreciate no it and lovely meeting you lovely to meet you too Cheers. take care man thanks bye so I can't really believe it. I'm sitting here with uh, Teddy Sheringham. He's here in Udon Thani um, doing a bit of, uh, is, is it like a promotional thing with uh, Udon Thani Football Club? Or? Uh, kind of. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, came here and just did a um, little bit of uh, speech last night. Q okay. Q&A. Yeah. Just to, um, How'd it go? Yeah, it was all right. It was a yeah. nice little night. Very different to the English style. Of course. Uh, very different. Um, um, 
but it was great. I thought I'd do this be- simply because there's so obviously there's so many football fans wherever you go in the world. But here in in Thailand, you've got a massive expat community, big football fans. You go down to any of these bars when there's any big matches on, or even small matches. You know, it's full people in front of the screens watching it. So I thought it'd be a good thing for having a little chat with you and just um, okay. getting something out there, for the, out there for them for a change. Yeah. So yeah, the channel that I've got and my wife's got, it's really about life in Thailand. We've been living here for three years. So um, this is a little bit different. Um, I've already done an interview with Alexander Capasoda. He's the captain at Udon Tiny Football Club and it went mad. People loved it. So doing, it, doing this with you, it's great. I know a lot of people are going to enjoy it. So looking back on just briefly your history, you know, coming out of Leighton, was it you came out of? Chingford. Chingford? Uh, Himes Park. Himes okay. Park, Chingford. Well, all of that, that kind of area I know anyway, but um, coming out of there, going into Millwall, mm. mate of mine, Danny Baker, he would have been there watching you all the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, he, him, his dad and my dad used to work together. So, um, and then you went on to, from there, Nottingham Forest. Yeah. And then from Nottingham Forest on to Spurs. Yeah. Man United, Spurs. Yeah. What was it? Was it Chelmsford after that? Paul, Paul Smith. Yeah. Paul Smith and then West Ham. So. And then Colchester right at the end. Just briefly. Yeah. Uh, look, when you look back on that, it must be like a bit of a, a mind blowing thing thinking of all of that. What a career. Right yeah. at the pinnacle of your career for so long. Yeah, I, I talk about my career quite a bit going around doing the Q&As. Yeah. And I didn't come on the scene and everyone saying he's going to be a superstar. It no. was a, it was a everyone said I was going to, I was too slow to get to the next level okay so I was always getting to the next stage the next stage the next stage so my right. rise even in my professional career uh, as apprentice getting in the the under 17s team then getting in the under 18s team then playing in the reserves at Millwall people th- didn't think I would be able to manage it no because I was too slow it was part of your drive as if to say to them I told you so well, exactly. I told you so well, this, this is my whole you know before I knew it I, I went from Millwall to Forest to Tottenham to Man United yeah. and playing for England and it's like wow who, who's too slow now there you and go so yeah yeah it's, it's not about being quick it's not about being slow it's not about being big it's not about being strong it's no, about no, no. arriving at the right times having the right mindset to conquer different things and uh... well that mindset is, is a big thing for me adversity in my life going through different things I've had the right mindset to succeed and I've done all right not big time but I've done okay but it's mainly been about mindset and I try and drive that home in fact this morning I was on Facebook helping some guy out who's on a right downer at the moment wants to get out here spend time in time and it, you know it's all about the mindset thing so with you okay you you've got the football obviously any sport you've got to have the right mindset yeah. you're a keen golfer all about mindset. Yeah. The majority of it's mindset, would you say? Uh, well, there's a lot of talent as well, but once you get to the top level, it's all about mindset. Yes, I've, that... I've never been the top level, but the top level in golf, they can all hit miles, they can all chip it, What's they can handicap? all play. Mine's four. Mine's four. four so. Well, that's not far um, off. Yeah, no, no, no. It's not bad. No, miles away, absolutely yeah. miles away. No, oh, okay. I played with different players that mm. hit the ball miles, Yeah. put it as close as they can. Okay. But more often than not when they get in the big competitions you don't hear about them because they don't hold the putts yeah, it's, sure, the ones yeah. that, it's the boys that hold the putts so the other thing is poker you're mm, a poker yeah, player are you still yeah. po- playing poker? I, I like to I've got young kids again now though so it's, it's hard to be out for you don't want to lose the family fortunes just <laughs> no no it's about them jumping on my head when I'm trying to have the sleep after playing poker okay. and they say come on dad come and play you know so it's you know it doesn't really work with having a young family but I loved my probably seven or eight years once I've just at the end of my career yeah and five or six years after that it was I was playing golf in the daytime yeah and then going to poker at night yeah and then getting a bit of sleep and then doing it all again and I've seen somewhere that you say that it was kind of like a bit of a substitute for the buzz that you missed off of, the, off, of playing yeah, football without a doubt yeah without a doubt. I, I was so fortunate that I went from playing football into poker yeah because that was where my buzz was that was the adrenaline rush yeah. that was the competitiveness yeah. in me that wanted to play constantly and I didn't miss I didn't miss football so much whereas you see a lot of players that come to the end of their end of their career bump done see it so often, oh, I'm yeah. not going to training this week I'm, yeah. I'm not I'm not not traveling up yeah. the country to go and play a game yeah you know your Saturday afternoons are just end off yeah but but my, that must be devastating for some people yeah which is why I'm thankful that I found something else to nice. to, to 
get that release. Now you were pretty successful as well. I, I did all right. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, it, was, it was good fun. Yeah. Now part of that, the part of that is, I'll say part of it. Uh, again, I believe that with poker, a lot of it's mindset. Not just the poker face, but a part of it is mindset. You've got to have the right mindset to accept the losses as well as the wins, that kind of thing. Yeah. Cool. I'll tell you why I bring that up. I'm a forex trader. I trade foreign currencies and right. I trade Bitcoin. And I've got a mining right. farm here for Bitcoin, all that kind of right. stuff. My success comes from mindset. The strategy I got from a woman in California. I worked on it, worked on it, but most of it is about me having the right mindset. If I put on a trade and I lose, I've just got to accept it and walk away. Well, not walk away, just continue as if nothing's happened. Yeah. Similar with poker, I take it. Similar with poker. Um, and again, you mentioned golf earlier and, and football, all, yeah. all three. Mm. You know, someone asked me the other day about well, what, what's your what's your thoughts in, or no, what's your what's your best part of your golf game? Yeah. And I, you know. I drive okay, my irons are decent, chipping not bad sometimes, putting not bad. Yeah. But I said probably my mindset is my, my, my best uh, attribute in golf because it doesn't matter about that bad shot, you, you've got to put it right straight away. That's it. And football without a doubt was, you know, I can remember, I think I missed a penalty yeah. and then the goalkeeper tipped it around the post for a corner. Right. I was absolutely gutted, but my mindset was I'm going to score from this corner to you now getting a bit of stick. Just move the, on. Get, got a bit of stick from the crowd. Yeah. I remember Darren and yeah. moving across in, up, uh, the corner in, yep. edited it straight in, and it was like, yes, give Beautiful. it straight back to the was giving it to me, you know. So it was into QPR. It was, a, it was yeah. like a good memory of mine. That is, nice. so that, that is, don't worry about what's just happened. Don't worry no, about no, missing no. that chance because the next one could come like that. Absolutely. You've got to be ready for it to, yep. to take it. Same with trading. Yeah. Same. Have you ever done any trading, anything like that, Forex trading or not? No. No? no? no, I just wonder because if you've got that mindset, it might be for you, but don't get involved just in case it doesn't work out. And I don't want you to point the finger. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, really great to speak with you. But that mindset, oh, one other thing before we go. Do you do anything specific to try and hone that mindset? Because mindset is perishable. If you don't, for me, as a trader, if I'm working, I've got to continue reading books about mindset, about ideas and things like that. Do you do anything like that or is it something that comes natural to you? No, I don't. Um, I suppose I should if I want to get to the But if it ain't broke, don't games. fix it. It's working for you, like whatever that. you're doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, a little bit like that. I'm, I'm quite content in my life. I'm not. I'm not addictive nature to no. to, to do something yeah. and have to do it to its best. I love practicing my golf. Yeah. That's that's probably something. Uh, a lot of people don't want to practice. They just go out and play all the time. Yeah. I, I love, if I'm not playing, I'll go and practice it a few balls. Sure. Make sure that I've got that shot ready for for when I when I need it on the course. So Excellent. That's, that's what the. Have you played much golf in Thailand or not? Uh, we played Thai Country Club uh, the other day. Yep. Uh, and I will be playing a couple of times before I go home nice. at okay. the end of the week. You, you're off at the end of the week, yeah? yeah. Back to the family. Nice one, Teddy. Really appreciate you spending time with me and uh, I'm sure that everyone's cool. going to enjoy it. Yeah, I love it. Great. Yeah. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers.